and now I invite Professor Madhu Khanna ji to give her presentation. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you for inviting me to present this paper. And good afternoon, everybody. I think everybody is very sleepy after the lovely lunch. So I hope my paper <laughs> will invigorate you. It, not my paper, really, but the, 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 the symbol of the Sri Chakra, which is so dynamic and so complete in all its aspects. So, uh, friends, what my paper is on the sacred geometry of Sri Chakra based on a medieval tradition, which goes back to about 11th century, 8th century, really. The first reference of the cult of Tipur comes from very early uh, Sri Vidya sources. Uh, when the tradition was still in its unalloyed form before it traveled possibly to the south. I mean, I, I don't mean to say that the tradition in South India, which is practiced, is in any way stained or anything like that, but it's highly Vedantized. But the earliest tradition, uh, particularly as it is expounded in the text of Nitya Shodishi Karnava and the works of Shivanand and Gyananand uh, and many other um, uh, masters of the Hadi and Kadi school of Sri Vidya, uh, really they emerged from Kashmir that area and they were having interactions with the, the 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 brahmin sages in kerala and other places but we haven't found exact uh, references for it B but somewhere one does find words that make us realize that maybe there's been a lot of take give and take between the north and the south so uh, my what i propose to do today is really to uh, give an introduction uh, to the geometrical categories um, of the of the Sri Chakra, as it is explained in one of the oldest and the most authoritative texts, that is the Nitya Shodashi Karnava, and its commentaries by Gyananand and Shivanand. Uh, and the reason why I've chosen my paper to be restrictive is because there is so much on the web on the geometry of the Sri Chakra. I don't know from where it's coming though. You know, it's coming from maybe understanding of uh, computational graphics. And I know that, you know, scholars have been contacting me on this aspect of the mathematics and geometry of the Sri Chakra ever since my first book came out in, in late 70s, early 80s, and is still being reprinted, where there is this reference to the Sri Yantra. Uh, there have been Russian scholars, there have been scholars, mathematicians who have... Um, who have been exploring how to reconstruct a perfect Sri Chakra. And I must say that, you know, it's a very big puzzle. Um, people have not been able to construct a most perfect, the, the perfection of form is not there. So I thought it would be a good idea for me to talk about the traditional indigenous methods, you know, through which uh, 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 Sri Chakra can be, uh, uh, can be created um, uh, without any uh, problem, you know, because there is a method, traditional method to which it can be done um, uh, without really, uh, with, uh, really understanding. It's, it's based on really the way we understand this, its philosophy. That is the most interesting part, that you have to know the philosophical dimension of Sri Chakra if you want to understand the geometrical and the mathematical um, ideas. So uh, the Sri Chakra, as I see it, is one of the most celebrated and sophisticated sacred icons ever to evolve in the history of world art. Although in my, uh, in my abstract I've written Tantric Shaktism, but it's really the history of world art. I mean, you know, there hasn't been. And the reason why um, I say this is because um, in the vast repertoire of world art, Scholars, philosophers, mathematicians, and scientists have been dazzled by its geometrical perfection and have universally recognized the unique composition of this ancient symbol for the reason that the chakra, sometimes called a yantra, is not simply a visual diagram but a variegated symbol of the theory of creation of Pratabhigya based Trika school of Kashmir Shaivism. A visual monument of great potency, the Sri Chakra embodies the goddess Tripur Sundari in her cosmic form and translates the abstruse philosophy of the 36 tattvas 
that are the building blocks of meta theology of a cult. The the thing is that you there is no Sri Vidya worship without the Sri Chakra, See, because the Chakra is the goddess, and even where she is worshipped in her iconic form, the aniconic form of the Chakra will always be worshipped, even when you invoke the deities Dhyana, and. Um, so a sri, a sri, the, the, the chakra is many things. I mean, in the sense it's, it is a whole universe uh, as envisioned by the philosophy of this uh, tradition. It is at the same time, each of the tattvas is presided over a goddess. So it's a very gendered cosmos, which you see in the Sri Chakra, 110 goddesses who are considered to be emanations of goddess Tipur At the same time, these goddesses then in their sonic body form are the mantras. And the mantras are nada. And the nada is then divided into the four stages of cosmic sound, uh, which Bhartri Hari also talks about, which Professor Tripathi spoke about in the morning, that you have Parapashanti, Madhima, Vaikari. So it's a whole lot of things all rolled into one. And it is not a subject really of one hour, but I will just introduce you to some ideas. So. Um, so the Sri Chakra has also been widely acknowledged by art historians as a visual masterpiece of mathematical abstraction and has come to occupy a place of preeminence among the great works of world art. The great psychologist uh, C.G. Jung, the renowned psychologist, also found in the Sri Chakra an interesting parallel to the study of visual archetypes in non-Western cultures. So it kind of moves it has no boundaries in that sense. A famous Russian scientist, Dr. A. Kulaivacheva from the University of Moscow has been exploring the structural properties of the Sri Chakra through sophisticated computer programs. While such explorations have gone a long way to provide a scientific basis, modern scientific basis, I would say, to the ancient symbol, it is vital to represent the traditional methods that were evolved thousands of years ago by the sage scholars to trace a geometrically perfect chakra without the aid of instruments. So according to, now this is uh, based on my personal research, according to Madhavananda Sabhagya Sandoha, is an ancient uh, text, a commentary on Parmanand Tantra, that's um, uh, Patala 16, there are 93,400 versions of the Sri Chakra. So only a few examples have been found so far. Flawless in its proportion and symmetry, the technique of its construction is given in several Sanskrit texts. All the authorities are unanimous on the aesthetic laws of proportion, symmetry, order, and number on the basis of which its geometry is explained in the sources. Uh, um, I quote a little passage from a text which I happened, I was very fortunate to read the text in the 80s when I was working on my own work on the Sri Vidya for a PhD at Oxford. And uh, I read these two texts with uh, uh, Professor Venu Gopal from in Pune, Deccan College. Uh, they were both on, I read many texts among which this was, and we, it was really very puzzling because to, to read a passage in Sanskrit and then to draw it out, you know, uh, to follow the instructions uh, was, was very mind-boggling, you know, but we did manage it somehow. So I'm reading the last passage in the Sobhagya Kalpadrum, which states about the Sri Chakra, the line should be unbroken and should not be depressed. The triangle should join the line of the vertical diameter and all the apexes of the triangles and the corresponding petals should be in the same line, which also contains the central point. All the inter intersections, marmans. So here you have two images. You have a Sri Yantra on the left. You see how perfect it is, composed of nine triangles. And what is interesting about this is it's, it's an image from Nepal uh, dated to 18th century. That is the image of Goddess Tipur Sundari, a very unusual, I would say, tantric icon because she's seated on a throne which is made of five gods and it's known as Panchapreta Asana. We won't go into the iconographic details. But what is interesting is that this deity is invoked in that form right on the, in the bindu, which is a dimensionless point in the center of the middle triangle. Now, interestingly enough, this chakra shows uh, the, the aniconic and the iconic together. 
you can't see the images of the deities, but they have been painted, you know, on the triangles itself. Um, so you see how perfect it is, you know, the, the triangles, the way they are drawn, and uh, at the same time, the apexes are all in the straight line, and the marmans, the intersections, are the joints which are created through three different lines coming together, even they are very perfectly in, in, in balance. Um, so in order to do justice to the subject, I wish to stress the unique way in which the metaphysics of Yantra and its visual form are intricately related uh, the <clears throat> in its symbolism and as well as in its philosophy. The Yantra is looked upon as a pattern of Spanda. And Professor Sisi Roy spoke about it in the morning. Pattern of vibration and expanding light, Prakashaha. Because right in the center you have is the is the dwelling place of Shiva and Shakti, and Shiva is described as Param Prakashaha, supreme light, expanding light, and Devi or his consort is known as Bimarsha or or his energetic power. So energy and light becomes the most important uh, symbols. They are not symbols really. That is the way they visualize the play of male and female uh, categories. The metaphysical basis uh, of this uh, of expansion uh, from a state of unity to multi multiplicity is described through Shiva and Shakti coming together. I mean, they are one as, as it's a single category. It's like they are one and in perfect state of unity and that how that oneness which is symbolized by the Bindu, slowly expands and becomes three categories, and three becomes nine, and nine becomes another ten, another ten, and ultimately fourteen. Altogether, they represent 36 categories. So the, the expansion is from a state of unity and fusion to a state of total multiplicity, plurality, where you have differentiated categories that, that emanate from um, uh, from the center. Uh, so as I said earlier, the metaphysical basis is of the Sri Chakra is a theory of 36 cosmic principles uh, based on the Trika philosophy of Kashmir Shaivism. Uh, now, it would be found helpful if the Yantra, and, and I've created a table, and perhaps it'll be better if we Okay, now this is another ritual diagram, you know, which is same, how it is used in the context of ritual. You see how beautifully it has been drawn. The lines again are perfect, and then you, it's right in the center, and it's drawn. It's a flow drawing of the Sri Chakra, which is going to be worshipped it's somewhere in South India. This is a Meru form of Sri Chakra. Again, it's the ri uh, ritual context. Now, this is what I wanted to explain, how the colors have changed. It was meant to be pink. Anyway, so if we look at, if I'll, I'll just explain this diagram because it brings out the, what I call the metaphysics of emanation or evolution and how it correlates with the yantra symbol. So um, cosmic evolution takes place in stages origin originating from prim primordial stillness. The cosmos expands and evolves through several, several levels. Uh, and phases. The pre-creative stage of evolution is a state of total void, uh, the purest principle of creation, known as Shiva. The beginning of creation is an omnipotent, all-pervading cosmic params, uh, cosmic principle, Param Shiva or Samvit, in embrace with Shakti, his potential energy. Everything we know, feel and hear is latent in this primordial consciousness. This being is Shunya, empty of any objective content, the only knowledge this being consciousness has is the cosmic concept of the self, the universal self, known in philosophical terminology as aham. You know, there's just aham, her uh, and her. But incidentally, are also the two uh, letters of the Sanskrit alphabet, her uh, and her, with, with a point, so aham. So the, the whole of uh, the, the, the linguistic, I would say symbolism is also um, captured in this, this the word aham. Uh, aham as self-ignited incandescent light, prakashika swabhava. 
At this stage, there is only one without a second, and all phases of creation are part of the state of unity as Shunya. This reality is reflected in the primal, um, in, the, in the Bindu, which is right on top, and which exists in the center of the Sri Yantra. Um, now, one the, once the Bindu is there, uh, I mean, there's no one, now what is interesting is that in Shaivite sources, you have a notion of Mahabindu, you have the, sh uh, the, the concept of Bindu, and then you have the concept of Bindu descending. You know, Bindu, the expansion of the Bindu, Prasara, Vikasa, how it expands and how it... So thus, the point which is the first form to emerge on the surface of the void, uh, represented in the center of the Sri Chakra is wholly transcendent. It is known as a germinal state of the world when material power is still very pure. There's no element of material power. It projects a level of creation on which all combined energies of the universe lie dormant as a realm of infinite possibility. The appearance of the Bindu is the gathering up of centripetal tendencies which will unfold during successive phases of evolution. Just as a seed of a tree is not manifested tree, yet holds the essence of a tree, so the Bindu holds the universe not yet differentiated from the original essence. Now, in the next stage, the creative stage of the Supreme is set in action under the irresistible force of self-regeneration, the Bindu expands. Cosmic evolution is moved into expansion by splitting of original unity into two. And the pristine homogeneity of the point is modified. So we have the appearance of two Bindus. So you have Bindu splitting and the two Bindus. But they actually the Bindus are meant to be vertical. Unfortunately, it has been drawn wrongly. And this is known as the Visarga Mandala. I can't go into the complicated, very complex symbolism of Visarga. Visarga is her. And Visarga, it's also a sort of a pulsation, you know, when you uh, pronounce it. So how they have um, linked it up with the word uh, Shabda and Artha coming together, you know. Um, so this process is known as Visarga Mandala, or emission, outflow. From the union of the two Bindus issues the primary sound principle nad atmika shakti the sanskrit letters that are inscribed and normally you can't see the sanskrit letters inscribed on the sri yantra but uh, they are they are meant to be there and people who worship it would know it you know how the entire alphabet is there with further expansion and contraction of energies there emerges a prim primal cosmic womb which is a triangle which is the first form of uh, cosmic location because you need minimum of three lines to um, uh, to really create any form of space. I mean, you can't create that. Uh, I mean, four would be, and the minimum is three lines that you need to enclose space. And now, now what is interesting is the whole composition of Sri Yantra is based on the triangle. Now, the triangle, you already have Shiva and Shakti, and then the triangle is again a state of unity it's known as Kamakala in a more, in a different, it's where the whole state of Shiva and Shakti is yoked by the unity of the two principles. Uh, and this triangle is known as Kamakala, again a technical term. And this phase is marked by Shakti's awareness of their threefold characteristic, Icha, Gyan and Kriya. Again, going back to Kashmir Shaivism. And these Icha, Gyan and Kriya are the three energies of the of the principle, um, uh, I would say the absolute principle, which is the energy of will, icha, gyan, energy of uh, of knowledge, and energy of action. So uh, trika would, and this is also trika. You know, trika would hold that you need this minimum three energies for manifestation. You can't just have will and not have action, or have action and not have will, or have. To, for manifestation to take place, Gyan has to be there. Tarka. Tarka is very important. That, you know, everything happens uh, because it is understood in a particular way. So that the categories of thought are uh, central to this understanding of this philosophy. Uh, so after the three... Now these three, of course, symbolically are linked with all the triads of the cosmos. And that is why the goddess is known as Tripur Sundari. She is the beauty of the three cities, the three, three forms 
of uh, Ichha Gyan and Kriya, which then get replicate, you know, as they expand. Um, but what is interest, what is important is that at this stage of creation, the spirit still asserts itself over material nature, and the three aspects of Shakti constitute herself experiencing creative function in her own universe. In other words, there is no uh, plurality, element of plurality till the triangle stage, you know. But what is interesting is that then this triangle then, um, you know, goes on multiplying. And I think in the morning there was this talk about part and whole. Now this is, it appears to be a part of the Sri Yantra, you know, triangle, but actually it's whole. So the whole inheres the parts and the parts inhere the whole. We'll just come to see when we come to the image. After the initial stage of crystallization of primordial energy, the subtle principles of matter and spirit begin to make their appearance and the whole process of creation alters course as matter begins to dominate spirit in the next phase. At this stage, the original unity splits into two streams, into subject and object, in which all divisions and opposites appear. This phase of Sri Yantra is indicated by the interaction of nine triangles. So you have then the appearance of the uh, um, nine triangles uh, out of which the Sri Yantra is composed. Out of that, there are five inverted triangles, which are known as Shakti triangles, and four Shiva tri triangles, which is known as Trikanda or um, uh, uh, Shrikantha, or the Shiva triangles or the fire triangles. And Sri Yantra is really an interlacing composition of both. So at each state, of creation, you have both the, uh, both the triangles coming together and, and forming a an hexagon. And we'll see in another diagram how this is done. So once matter uh, takes over the spirit, uh, and yes, and then these uh, triangles are called nine cosmic wombs, Navyoni, and parallel nine categories of nature in the macrocosm. So which is the triangles, as I said, are in four sets. You have um, the uh, Shiva triangles that emanate from the Shiva principle and uh, uh, they denote the Jiva and its vital energies and the five downward pointing represent Shakti principle and from them emanate material uh, elements of the macrocosm which is the five gross elements, the five tanmatras, which is ten categories, all the human organs which react to the impressions of the senses. These are the organs which facilitate, that's Gyanendriya and Karmendriya. So basically, and then you also have the Kanchukas, which I have not dealt with. So together you have the 36 categories that come into play and the Sri Chakra becomes an emblem of creation. And this, it is to be, and Sri Chakra can be understood through the Shrishti Krama, as I've tried to explain, and also through the Samhara Krama, which is where you go from outermost periphery of the Chakra into the Bindu. Now, um, what I wanted to show next was how, yeah, so this is another image. This is how it looks. This is another Meru form. Um, you, there are also, this is a crystal Sri Yantra, but you see how perfect it is. This is a 3D kind of image. It shows how complex it is, you know. If you, if you sort of layer it vertically, um, this is how it would look. Huh. So this is what I want. So this is basically the Bindu triangle. And each of these... Oh. Sri Chakra is composed of nine circuits. The first is a Bindu. Oh, sorry. Then the second is Sarsiddhi Prada Chakra. It's known as a triangle, which is this. Next is expansion of how the expansion takes place. So one becomes two now, you know, by drawing the upper triangle. Then the intersection. Then the next, how they increase it, they expand it. And at each stage, it is, it is a hexagon which expands. So again, at each stage, is Shiva and Shakti coming into play. So perfectly done. Sorry. Sarvaroga Har Chakra. Sorry. 
and then you have Sar Rakshakara Chakra, then you have Sar Arthasadak Chakra, then you have Sar Sabhagyadayak Chakra, and see how the expansion is taking place. And then you finally, then you have the the eight petal lotus and the sixteen petal lotus and the square enclosure. So you have a fully formed Sri Yantra. Okay, I wanted to show that flash. So I tried to create a flash diagram, you know, to show how the expansion takes place. So it is here, so maybe we should see it before I move on to the next one. It's a bindu pulsating. This is <laughs> I haven't seen the uh, here. You see how it expands. Next. Next. Here. You see the luminosity. And actually this is found in the Yogni Rude Deepika. I have followed the text. This is not been this is not my imagination. This is really taken from you see how it's happening? And there's light and sound. So here it is, you know, this is the way it grows. Okay. Thank you so much. So, um, so this is one way of, um, one of the techniques, you know, which has been explained. I just want to talk very briefly about the next method. Yeah. Now, what is interesting is, you know, I've been looking for interpretations as to how this can be explained geometrically. And I've been looking for all kinds of, all texts, I mean, Ganit comedy and all. But they don't really talk about this. But then I did find a, a very weird text which perhaps nobody reads. And I just want to comment on it. Uh, the symmetry that permeates creation as a norm is fundamental to the construction of the yantra. Leaves of plants do not grow out of tune with nature's laws, and the yantra similarly evolves in accordance with traditional rules. The three principal modes of evolution described um, in the sources are the emergent, which is a straight and symmetrical line, that's Riju, the curved and symmetrical, Sushma, and the quasi-symmetrical or the eccentric, Vishma. The root principle of this mathematical descent from Bindu to unified and orderly periphery is called Ardhamatra, matra gains from measure, or the measure that is not static, but grows and involves in accordance with laws of harmony and rhythm. From the source, the Bindu derives the expanding line, seen as the continuum of cosmic sound. From Nad, the primal stirring, Spanda, of Shiva and Shakti, originate magnitude and dimension, Parimaya, uh, from Parimeya arise symbiotic opposites, which is male and female and categories, centrifugal and centripetal polarities, and the order of numbers, Sankhya. Number provides harmony and stability, integration and unity. Thus, the number three gives specific location to magnitude and becomes a triangle, four to the square, five to six to the hexagon, etc. As we have seen, these numbers are not simply sum of integrals, but have specific symbolic relationship with philosophical ideas. The integral relationship of form and content also operates in the reverse. If the structure of the yantra is imperfect, that is, if the balance of the outer form is, is distorted, or even a single line or a symbol is eliminated, then the content and symbolic significance will not 
will be abolished simultaneously. I mean, it'll, it won't be taken seriously at all. So, uh, so this is one, one method of drawing the Sri Chakra. The other is uh, described, now the one which I've shown you, uh, Lakshmi Dhar speaks about that particular way and also the text of Nitya Shodrishi Karnava. I have a translation of the text, but it's very difficult to decipher, so I'm not going to read that. Uh, what I want to now show you is the second way in which the Sri Chakra is traced and that is taken from the Sabhagya Kalpadrum. Um, now, the, the, that is... Okay, the second method of drawing is first you draw the circle and with vertical lines, nine vertical lines with an axis and then you go inward. You know, in the first method it was you start from the bindu and you move out. Yeah, this is... Okay. Now, I'll, I'll just read a small passage from the text. Erect a straight line passing to the center, touching the circumference of the circle at the top and bottom. At six angulas from the bottom, six angulas there form. Again, at six angulas there form. And again, at three angular there form. So, you know, basically you, you create this form. And then the next stage is, I won't read the text because it's, I myself get confused when I read the text. So the next stage is, huh, the next stage is again the same thing. You know, you create the triangles and you superimpose them according to uh, the, the you, you really fix them within the horizontals that have been formed. So you start with the outermost and then slowly move in. And what you finally get is this. So you move from outside. This is called Samhara Krama. You move from the outer periphery into the center. Is just the opposite of what. So, but what is interesting is that after you've drawn the circle, this text does talk about the uh, eight petal lotus and the 16 petal lotus. Outside the circle, it says, draw four more circles which are removed from the inner circle radially by seven, three, six, and two angulas respectively. Thus, there will be five circles in all, including the original circle and four intermediate spaces. In first of them, outside the innermost circle, draw eight symmetrical petals. Now, again, they talk about symmetry of the petals, you know, the symmetry of the lotus petals, which are drawn outside, like those of a lotus. In the second of these spaces, draw the front position of the petals. Um, the petal will appear continuously. Similarly, draw 16 symmetrical petals in the third space and their front positions in the fourth place, spaces. Thus, there will be two lotus rings. The petals should be drawn with their boundaries convex outwards and the front portions of the petals with their boundaries convex inwards. Thus, by proper exped expedience, symmetrical petals should be drawn. Then after three angles from the outermost circle, a symmetric square has to be drawn on the four sides of the triad of squares exactly at the respective centers, four gates have to be made, one on each side of 10 angles width. No line should be thicker than an angle. Wipe off the vertical diameter and the two sets of petals. So, you know, this is the way they explain. And it's, it's, it's very puzzling uh, to, to do it, but we have been able to do it. So the line should be unbroken, should not be depressed. Uh, the sides of the triangle should lie in the same line, which also contain the central point. All the marmans should be without openings. The apexes of all triangles should touch the different lines perfectly. Uh, the three squares forming the bhupura, which is a square enclosure with four gates, should consist of parallel lines. Thus, by proper art method, one should draw the Sri Chakra. So, so they emphasize the the symmetry, the proportion, and the beauty of its perfection. Okay. Okay, this is, this is an electronic image which was created um, this, uh, some, some years ago. It's a sound pattern of the Sri Yantra, which was created by Roland, Ronald Namath. And I thought it was interesting to show how a different artists, he's a very well-known artist in, uh, in Sweden. 
and uh, he was very fascinated when uh, this yantra book had come out and he had experimented with the sound pattern sounds how sounds great and he's also uh, he also got a i think he did get some prize for this or something you know to create this now the other image that i wanted to show was yeah this it's by paul del delisil that it shows how complex it is when you see the 3d form and how um, it is really shown now i'm not in a position to you know decipher the geometry of this figure i'm sorry i think some of the but it shows you know when you look at it from all sides as a 3d and as an image which is which has uh, movement you know but the idea of movement there are two things which are very important in understanding of the sri chakra geometry one is the idea that it's a dynamic symbol it's not st it looks static but it's dynamic and the second is that the parts inhere in the whole and the whole inheres in the parts this is a very important element of uh, this diagram okay now i'm going back to what kumar swami because i think that's only 3 minutes ha uh, no i'll take only 1 minute here so i want to uh, conclude my presentation by recalling with um, what what anand kumar uh, swami has said about image making in india he makes this amazing comment he talks about he has documented the whole procedure of how shilpa yogins create art and i think that's a very important contribution he made um he says sometimes to reach no i'll just ha huh. a uh, kumar swami quoting several sanskrit sources describes the various disciplines which an artist has to undergo as the first step in the ritual which precedes creation of a sculpted image for example he goes to a solitary place then he must discipline his impulses control his physical and mental processes and suppress the chaotic world of subconscious through penetrating concentration sometimes to reach the inner depths of his consciousness i quote the imager on on the night before beginning his work and after ceremonial purification is instructed to pray o da lord teach me in dreams how to carry out the work i have in mind after the artist has reached an inner poise and moral grace and integrated himself emotionally and spiritually he evokes the deity by means of dhyana mantras which provide him with a sort of a mental blueprint for the execution of the image after the work is completed a priest consecrates the image in a rite called opening of the eye devya chakshu pran pratishtha what we call which endows it with sacred power this procedure emphasizes how far such artistic expression is far from being an aesthetic exercise at no point in the whole discipline is the artist separated from his art and in activity of creation he annihilates all traces of his individuality and egohood the shapes and forms he creates reveal to him the macro cosmos as it exists within himself in this sense the created object prepares its maker for a spiritual return to his primordial sources similarly the construction of a yantra is complete right to be followed meticulously care is taken to choose the most propitious place and time of the day muhurta the surface to which it is applied must bear auspicious signs and be smooth the drawing however may be perfect in its proportions correct in its brushwork faultless in its colorings it may be scrupulously drawn according to the rules of linear formation set out in the shastras and yet may fail to reflect the true significance of yantra unless the maker can transmit to the figure his own life energy you know that's a very important thing about Uh, about at least the making of the yantra and i remember when i was researching on this and i went to karpatri ji who was my guru in in the san banaras by the way and uh, i so he sent me to sarfu mia i said who makes these shri yantras they are so complex so i went to sarfu mia a muslim artist from where karpatri ji used to and karpatri ji had blessed him and taught him all the dhyana mantras and so i went to him and i kind of i have catalogued you know how the yantra was made he would first visualize it he would first he said i the day i have to make the shri yantra night before that i, I would keep on upavas and then when i would sit quietly i would then i would chant the dhyan mantra and then start making it 
so the, it's a it's a huge uh, there's a huge nomenclature of ritual of meditation of geometry of symbolism and of philosophy which comes together uh, in this kind of representation so i think uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity for sharing this knowledge with you thanks wonderful presentation it was we are really thankful to you uh, on the basis of the bindu from bindu to triangle triangle to circle you have beautifully expressed how how the geometrical form as well as the 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 anthropomorphic or human form or the form hmm. comes and they are interrelated they are totally just interrelated. one thing i i would like to know uh, as a point of curiosity uh, does uh, there is a form of shiva tripurantak is there any relationship and as far as the the forms related to triangle or three is a number of things are there yes tridosh trichatra tridev yeah. trilok tripurantak trigun yeah so everything is there so three all is that is important yes the, and the triangle the triangle yeah triangle very important the triangle they would be assimilated in the triangle the triangle means meeting all, Haan, all meeting of the all three points yeah so uh, time is short but still if a uh, few questions please please uh, when you were saying that starting with a bindu and then comes a triangle uh, this triangle is a dynamical equilibrium it's not static equilibrium mm. so there is a self uh, uh, self principle which gives uh-huh. rise to dynamical yes. equilibrium and then different triangles are coming so there is a dynamics which creates first triangle then various triangles and uh, now if we go to other yantra sri yantra is the mother of all yeah. then the same principles gives rise to uh, other yantra or for different yantra you need different principle no you have different ways of explaining like in kali yantra yeah. you have five uh, concentric triangles yeah. but kali yantra is explained not through 36 categories but sankhya categories mm-hmm. so it has got 15 points you know it doesn't have 36 yeah category so they have their own way of explaining it but shri yantra is unique because there is so much philosophy gathered around it no you know, i am asking whether you can't explain it no, like that. the only thing way you can explain it is because all devi yantras and shiva yantras have a hexagon and devi yantras do have a triangle and of course when you want to understand uh, Uh, what is a triangle triangle is really the cosmic womb of the goddess and invariably the goddess is understood with the three energies energetic principle ichha gyan and kriya beyond that they don't explain we assume that they are talking about the sankhya categories no you know in, in physics when you are seeking about unifying principle hmm. unified field theory other things but you don't have that kind of unified principle out of which maybe sri yantra coming kali yantra is for from the same principle under certain conditions it may give rise to kali yantra hmm. is it true or not it can yeah it may I, I, you see the mere fact that the sources talk about 93600 types of yantras so there must be some correlation but i know one thing that later yantras of the of the gods are are influenced by the philosophy of shri chakra see in the in the yantra shastra the uh, agama gives us a, a particular number of layers each layer has a specific number of petals so basically the your question was the principles that are enshrined in the shri chakra are they applicable to other yantras so in fact we have the number which is associated with a principle so if you have ashtadala padma dvadashadala padma chaturdashadala padma or shodashadala padma so wherever you have that particular number it is associated with that principle hmm. so you have different principle no 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 see each number carries a principle yeah. each number carries a principle for, for example in the shatkona kunda if you say if i said shat means the number 6 it is associated with a principle that is true but but the pancharatrins would look at the principle differently 
they'll see it as you know emanation of Vishnu and the Shaivites will see it as no, emanations uh, the, in, and the Shaktas will in, see in, it they no, interpret it differently no, here in, in the yantra part see the physical uh, description that, that that is immaterial to the, in, in this aspect the physical description of chaturbhuja etc won't come in the yantra construction at all in the yantra, yantra construction if it is three if it is chatushkona if it is panchakona or if it is shaddala ashtadala the only that number is only mattering so whatever is described whatever is pertinent here is also pertinent in the other the other thing also in the tatriya yantra when we construct it we we put it shortasha shortasha dala why the number shortasha means in the in that bijakshara because it is associated with the number of syllables bijaksharas oh. in the bijaksharas we have got 16 this thing the tatriya hare krishna shorta similarly if it is a shiva pancha shiva pancha akshari then if it is shiva gayatri i have 24 so each yantra has five uh, five permanent features the first one is the bhupura as she explained the second one was the yantra raja yadbhay tantra raja yadbhay asunite ponraspasu the prana devata the third one is the dikpalakas and the fourth one is the gayatri mantra and the fifth one is the uh, the bijakshara of main bijakshara in between um, regard, um, according to the requirement they add the number of mantras based on that number of mantras the petals are added based on that petals your principles come into picture so even when we chant the mantras and when we um, de- deploy them these are the principles that guide us from cho- when we choose the mantras yeah that's one way of looking at hey, one it. more thing is there is commonality in in, in jain art also we find the yantras yeah so tremendous there, there also these four petals six petals 16 yes, petals yes. equally actually yeah. what we have been doing since this morning that we have been taking only the vedic Nourished. puranic tradition yes in buddhism in jainism so we should we should now talk in terms of commonality and the commonality will bring to the unity of thought yes true hello oh, please ha neeraj hello have you Uh, have you followed these techniques or uh, any experiences on these things what you have showed here yeah yeah of course i know how to do it you do yes, do, yes. do practice these yeah, things yeah. and uh, you see the the thing is if you can't do the whole yantra you do the navyoni navyoni yantra which is you know the nine triangles and the whole shri chakra puja can be done Ex- in fact the bala tripur sundari form of Uh, of uh, the epithet of the prasundri is invoked in just the navyoni which is complete in itself which you can draw with saffron or you know it's very simple but what i the reason why i wanted to portray the traditional method because here you have all these computer technologies and you have these mathematician trying hard to make a perfect shri chakra and they can't make it and here you know you have practitioners who just do this and this and this and in you know keep increasing the lines as they've been taught and uh, they create and yourself nine please. last last nine. last question 43 43 um, yeah madam uh, it was very interesting presentation just one uh, uh, thing i wanted to here please in the whole center most inner most triangle or uh, that itself it is not drawn out of those five and four triangles shiva no. and shakti and that is equilateral triangle all three sides are equal no other triangle out of 43 had that dimension hmm. there are isosceles triangles and the things which i will be discussing tomorrow yeah, but the inner most triangle it is the only equilateral triangle and therefore three shakti if we say uh, in term of uh, mahakali maha lakshmi and mahara saraswati to yeah, all equal and uh, at the middle point is uh, lalita so not a fractal because uh, the part does not contain the whole second it is not also symmetrical if we say translational symmetry it is not symmetrical it has only bilateral symmetry so it is basically there is the mathematics behind that so tomorrow i will be discussing ki how this uh, geometric pattern comes out of new metallic mean series yeah the reason why i co- talked about part and whole is because philosophically when you look at the discipline of kashmir shaivism it's a, it's based on a monotheism you know it's a monistic philosophy so in a monistic philosophy whatever is contained in the bindu will have to be contained in the earth sphere as well 
okay so it may not be there ge in a geometrical way it may not be shown in a geometrical way but the relationship of part and whole is absolutely can be applied to that principle of unity between the highest principle and the lowest so that's why i spoke about that so, thank okay, you very thank much thank you very much thank you thank you